Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Craig Stover, the Executive Director of Allen's Lane Art Center. Uh, welcome to Art Show. Uh, we are here with Julie Zahn today. Uh, we are uh, socially distanced and we have fans and uh, purifiers, windows open. Uh, so I want to welcome everybody for coming today. Uh, Julie and I are going to have a fun little conversation. And uh, down at the bottom of your screen, there's a chat feature. And we're going to be taking questions from people towards the end of the conversation. So uh, if you have good questions for Julie, uh, feel free to type them in at the bottom uh, into the chat. And my assistant will bring them over to us. Uh, probably, we might not get to all your questions, but um, uh, a lot of the good ones we'll try to cover. So uh, welcome, Julie. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming today. Thank we really appreciate me. it. Uh, longtime friend of Alan's Lane and myself. So thanks. <laughs> thanks for coming. So I'm just going to dive right in uh, with the first question. Um, let's start at the beginning. When did you first know that you wanted to become an artist? Well, I wanted to be an artist as soon as I went off to college. Um, although I was raised by a, a professional artist, a printmaker, and she, my mother had a printmaking workshop in the house with three presses, two very large presses and one small press. So in high school, I used to go out to the workshop and do monoprints, things like that, or I did some etchings. Um, and also I had to give my mother crits from the age of about <laughs> nine. I would come home from school and she would have her, her work ready and ask me, you know, seriously, what I thought of her painting. So Were you also a studio assistant for your? Uh, no, but one year, I, I was sick a lot one year. We went, we had, we lived overseas uh, and I, it turns out I had some kind of a, an ongoing infection. So I stayed home a lot and I watched my mother work. And that year she was doing these large paintings and spraying them off in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I observed what an artist, you know, the life of an artist basically, um, especially that year. Um, so then you, you, but, you went to school for art. Well, I did, but first I went to college and I thought I would be an art major, but I, so the first class I took was an art class and I got a C. And I said, well, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna work. And I didn't like, it was such a conceptual, uh, the professor was just, you know, we just didn't really hit it off. I just wanted to paint and draw. And mm -hmm. so I decided instead I, I had a uh, roommate who was an art major. So <laughs> I lived kind of vicariously oh, through okay. her. You know, I helped her hang her senior art show. And, okay. Yeah. And I, I took art history and I painted, uh, I painted a fair amount actually on plein air. Um, even with the art history professor, we went out painting together sometimes. He took students with him. Uh, and then I just painted, you know, uh -huh. and so I knew I wanted to be an artist. So, um, so a lot of people tend to want to be an artist, but when did you make the decision? Yes, this is going to be. Well, yeah. What happened? I graduated from college. I went to Washington. I got a job and all my friends there, you know, we had a little group of friends and they were all either going to law school or whatever. I set up, I got a, a, a room in a house that was a little pricier than I could afford, but I wanted it desperately because it had this um, extra room, kind of like a balcony, so I could set up still lives. <laughs> so I painted, you know, the still lives. But ultimately, after about six months, I accepted a job to go to Japan to teach English. And I felt like I had to get away from my uh, life as a young 20 something. It just it, it wasn't what I wanted. So I, I went to Japan, I took this job. And as soon as I got there, I, I went to the local art store and got a bunch of pastels and charcoal and paper. And, and I had a bicycle and I went out every morning. I had to start teaching at 9 a.m. So I would get up at about five in the morning, just when the sun was coming up and, and just ride my bike like crazy out to the rice fields. And that's when, and I started drawing. So I really taught myself how to draw, I felt like. I, and that's when I knew that 
it was, you know, so you, I wasn't going to. So you were in Japan. How long were you there? Uh, two years. Two years. And two, then, two and a half And then years, where did you go actually. from there? Did you? And well, then, so I had a two year teaching contract and I was doing my artwork and everybody in the town knew I wanted to be an artist. Um, <laughs> so they were all teaching me everything. You know, I, I was a lot, you know, I had to go learn woodcut. I had to learn, they had <laughs> my schedule all arranged. I had to learn <laughs> Japanese painting. Um, also things like flower arrangement, you know, they were, it was just a wonderful experience. So after Japan though. Yeah. So after Japan, I came back to the States and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, I called my old college friend and said, I'm back now. What should I do? I, I don't know what I'm doing. And she said, well, come to Philadelphia. I'm at the Academy. Come join me at the Academy. So I thought that was a great idea. I put a portfolio together and I took the train up to Philadelphia and this was in um, early January. <laughs> and so here we are at the Peel House, which is the old academy uh, building. And, um, and they told me, well, you can't apply now. The classes are starting like tomorrow. It's a little late to apply for this semester. So I was very disappointed, but within minutes, my friend said, ah, oh, there's uh, Dan Miller. He's uh, the acting dean right now. And she told him, this is my friend. She wants to be a student here. And she brought her portfolio and he said, well, and they won't let her in. And he said, well, we need students. <laughs> let me just see her work. And um, so I started at the academy right away. And it was, it was. So you really were, you were at the academy. Yeah. You graduated. Yeah. I assume. What made you for, stay? For years. What made you stay in Philadelphia? Um, Were you here the whole time right after school? No, or? I I got a travel scholarship from the academy and I went back to Japan. And that time it was a hundred percent, you know, doing my work uh, or learning. Uh, and um, that was well, the scholarship. It sounds very nice, the travel scholarship, but it's like three thousand so. dollars. So by the time you get there and, <laughs> and spend about a week, you know, you're pretty much broke. So it's bait and switch, so. is really okay. I, <laughs> so what? Well, it depends where you go, but you know. Well, I'm, I'm, what I'm really curious is what what made you come back to Philadelphia and stay? Oh, um, I I think Philadelphia. It's very livable. Um, I. I don't know, you know, I just, it's just <laughs> my home, it became my home. So um, I've been to your studio. But, yeah. Right. Is yeah. that, is that, how long have you had this studio? 25 years. 25 years. Yes. So you're just moved in, you've unboxed, you're, you're here now, you settled in. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, that's not where <laughs> I moved. I mean, when I, first, oh, okay. when I first came back to Japan, I mean, from Japan after a year, I spent a year there and I learned tons of stuff. I studied with an antique screen restorer to learn about uh, wood, paper, glue, all that stuff that I use all the time. And then at the end of my stay there, I, I discovered um, Serizawa, who was a textile artist. And um, I found that, you know, like there's a whole cottage industry in Kyoto where they are using katazome, which is a stencil resist technique, to do, to make very high end, you know, fabric for obis, things like that. Um, so I started studying just at the very end, just the last maybe three months of my stay, I studied with somebody who had studied with Serizawa. And um, she had her whole, I think she influenced me quite a bit because I was so impressed. Her whole house with her, was her studio, even the outdoors. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I live, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> So she taught on Saturdays and um, anyway. So, so I, I've, I've had the, the honor of being at your studio. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen everything that's there. And I'm curious to know, you, you had mentioned the fact that there are lots of different mediums that you went to school and learned. Mm -hmm. And so what was it about, I primarily know you as sort of a painter, collage, drawing kind of a mm -hmm. uh, an artist um what was it about that those sort of techniques that really drew you to it 
I mean, you could do photography, you could do poetry, you could do, oh, you know, fiber or anything. Yeah. So, so why? Well, well really, I, I started, I, I feel like I was primarily specializing in woodcut at oh. the academy. Although, I mean, figure drawing is huge, you know, just drawing. Um, I mean, spending four years drawing the figure, there, there is nothing better than that. That was a luxury. Um, so, but, but the woodcut, I, that's what attracted me to, uh, you know, I use a lot of woodcut in my work. Mm -hmm. um, so. How long does it take you to, 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 to cut? Normally? Not, not long. Um, I would imagine I have after good years. knives, you know, yeah. I have, the thing about woodcut, I started off with a really excellent set of knives. Um, when I was in Japan the first time, you know, I, I, they sent me to this woodcut uh, artist. It, it was his hobby. It wasn't his profession. But he, um, at the very end, he took me to a knife shop and told me <laughs> what knives to buy. And I came back and went to the academy and started studying with Dan Miller. And honestly, the first woodcut I did was one of the best ones I've ever done. Mm. It was the first one. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Japan, I had to, they, he treated me like a kindergartner. I had to just chisel. Right. He wouldn't right. let me, you know, well, I you had to start. draw the line and then chisel. Mm -hmm. So, um, you could, know, could any it, of that been sort of a, I'm a big believer in beginner's luck. Yeah. You, know, you forget what you're doing and just go into yeah. it. So maybe that was a little yeah. part of yeah. the first one. Yeah. A big part of it. I, well, actually, um, I did so much drawing in Japan and I, I brought all those drawings back and I missed, I was so homesick. So I was doing woodcuts of my, um, of some of my drawings like tatami, mm -hmm. mat, you know, still mm -hmm. lives on tatami mats. Um, I remember that first one, I, I had a vase of pansies uh, in it. I think I put that in there and I could only find like one pansy. It was mm. in January. <laughs> 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 so I kept turning it, you know, and drawing it. It's a different it. pansy. Yeah, turn I kept it. turning, uh -huh. you know, every angle. And so it looks like a whole bunch of them. <laughs> That's a great, great trick. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so the techniques that you use um you've been you've been doing these these woodcuts but i've also seen you collage those woodcuts right uh so so you have multiple techniques that you've been yeah. sort of you didn't start out doing that no, i assume it's no, been a gradual that, process of yeah it has actually you know i think i started collaging work um when I, I was in Maine. Here we have to bring up Maine, <laughs> yes, right? right? That's <laughs> requisite. I think half of Philadelphia goes to Maine during the summer. <laughs> so Yeah. So I went to Maine 10 summers in a row. And that, um, you know, the first five summers I was doing pretty bad work. I didn't like any of them. And then, um, but you have to pay your dues. You know, as an artist, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. You really have to pay your dues. You've got to put the time in. You've got to do a thousand pieces, you know, before you can say you're an artist, uh, even, mm -hmm. right? You can't really. That's how you make a, yeah. make a good apple pie. Yeah. You gotta make right. a thousand pies. Yeah. So one day, well, a friend visited me in Maine and I was very focused on my work, but she wanted to talk, which kind of drives me nuts when somebody's <laughs> with you when you're trying to work and, but she wanted to come. So, okay. Uh, and I, I was very, you know, getting a little, uh, what's the word? Not frenetic, but a little antsy. bit antsy. <laughs> and I just, I had some scraps and I just, you know, just put it down just to finish the piece so we could go back home and, you know, finish this. Um, and it, it was beautiful. And so I just started working like that. So I, what I'm hearing is I need to come over and annoy you for a break. <laughs> is that, is that yeah. that's the next Sometimes step? Sometimes <laughs> you have to be in a, cer a certain agitated right. state or something to really do good work Well, I, I, to, to make a breakthrough. Cause you know, you can't just, that's how I am. Right. But well, I think one of the fascinating parts of my job is going over to artists' studios and seeing what they do and, and finding out what their techniques and how they go about creating works of art. So I found that there are some artists that will you know, need for the inspiration to strike. Mm -hmm. And then there's other artists who do something every day. And I happen to know that oh. you do something every day, usually, right? I've seen that sketchbook of yours. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Well, yeah, for a couple of years, I, I uh, yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. 
that really did change my life yeah. doing that sketchbook. They were small, right? They were yeah, just little. Yeah, little three by three. Um, and that's another case where it was one of these situations. I went to a lecture and it was a really, really long lecture by um, Ken Culey, who's a, a collage artist. And after two hours of staring at his work and I like his work, I took the train back home and looking out the window, everything looked different. Like I saw it with different set of eyes. So the next morning I was so excited to start working, but I had to take my daughter to a baseball game way out in the middle of somewhere. She was managing the baseball team. We had to go out to Pottstown or somewhere. So I quickly put together a bunch of art supplies and we drove out there and while she was doing her thing i had about two or three hours to to do collage you mm -hmm. know and i started working so i had brought this big uh sample book of blank pages um and i just drew uh squares all three inch squares fit them on and that was my daily routine after that mm -hmm. and it really pushed me well, you showed like, for you showed that here yeah. Uh, when we had a show of yours a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's right. And I right. thought it was just fascinating. Oh, and thank uh, you. I really like the fact that you didn't think anybody would be interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that became yeah. like everybody, oh, I just got to thumb through that and see those. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, it, and as an artist, I know you were like, okay, you know, failure, failure, but ooh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And that's, well, the know. thing about those little sketches, even though, like, I would set a timer, I had one hour to do a page. And every one of them has to be, you know, life or death. You have to, you know, so it was so intense doing those. <laughs> That's how I feel about yep. the work. You know, mm -hmm. even if it's a little tiny three or three by three, that's how important it is because it just that's <laughs> how that's what I bring to my work. So, so I'm curious to know what, what I don't know about you is say, you know, you're going to make a large piece. Uh, how do you tend to approach that? Do you find, do you sit around and mull it over? Do you have a basic idea? Or are you more of an experimenter? So you maybe try something and it doesn't work and retry it. Mm -hmm. I find artists tend to fall in usually one of these two categories. Yeah, What's... I think I'm an experimenter. Okay. And I just have an idea what I want to do, but how to get there. Um, I'm very experimental in how I get to where I'm going. So mm -hmm. this initial idea, you know, you can keep it in your head, but what you come out with might not be very much related even because then, you know, you start, the work starts to have a life of its own. So, you know, you just have to start working with the piece, but that initial idea you keep in your head and that probably keeps you going mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. Really, you think about it. I'm curious to know if you do collage, do you find yourself doing the same thing? Like if you have to change it, do you collage over or do you rip it off or, you know, um, or do you, or does, or does not, does that not tend to happen with the collage? Um, both, you know, I don't just collage, I paint and collage. I try to, you know, okay. um, should we talk about this piece? This uh, is a collage, yeah, well, we can, we can talk but, about it. So, well, so what, what did you bring us today? Let's. Uh, I mean, this piece is, um, it's a piece on canvas. So I, you know, I staple gun a piece of canvas on the wall and then I prepare it. So gesso, um, sometimes I make my own gesso. Sometimes I just use what, you know, um, acrylic gesso. And, um, and then I start with something, you, you know, I actually, for this piece, I did a lot of little maquettes, um, just to kind of loosen me up. I thought I had time. I, this was a commission and- um, This was, piece? Yeah, this okay. is, yeah. I did three pieces for a commission. Okay. Um, is it a triptych or is it a- No. Okay, so it's a standalone. I just was working on three pieces, although okay. it, it really does, they're very much related. Um, so I did a bunch of, uh, of these little maquettes, but of course the real thing that, did nothing for me. Mm -hmm. It didn't, it just, like, was just a waste of time in a way. Mm -hmm. I, finally, I had to come to terms with, what have I done? Nothing. And it's a month away. This thing is due in a month. Uh -huh. So um, I take everything out of my studio, you know, all my drawer. I'd look at all my work, hundreds of pieces. I'm just seeing, well, what can I use? Anything, anything here, any colors that mm -hmm. inspire me? 
whatever. And um, I always I keep coming back to this. Um, yeah, I was just about I, to mention your you have a. A, a Julie palette, a vocabulary. right? <laughs> I do. I you, have a vocabulary. You have these go-to colors, these 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 greens yeah. and these uh, like a Prussian blues that yeah, I Prussian. see. Yeah. Every once in a while, it's like a dark gray. Here, I see you've gone gold and then the pink, like yeah. a little of pink, yeah. Yeah. I find. But yeah. you can do so much with those colors, oh, uh, which is what I really uh, enjoy. Uh -huh. That I, I find you, you're... You have a, uh, specific colors, but even just the tonality of the colors, you tend to stay within these certain tonalities, mm -hmm. but you're able to get so much out of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I love to experiment with different blues. For example, paint versus ink versus, mm -hmm. um, you can use pigment, you know, bound with a mm -hmm. soybean mm -hmm. um, uh, binder. There's nothing um, quite like the printed color as a texture rather than a painted texture. Right. And I think having those next to each other, you do a wonderful job of that where it's sort oh, of uh, uh, combined and all that. Mm -hmm. it, it satisfies yeah. the eye. How, how to make things cohesive, you know, what's your whole uh, background gonna be and then mm -hmm. how to work with that. And, mm -hmm. Do you, you know, think I really in layers? Work a lot. I work with a lot of uh, directions, like um, okay. horizontals, verticals, and how to bring mm -hmm. them, you know, how to bring the eye around depth, you know, creating mm -hmm. depth. Yeah. I mean, my mother used to take me to museums and she would, you know, dissect paintings, you know, how does, how do these colors take your eye right. here around? And, you know, it's, it's very interesting. It never gets boring. No. It's just so, I just, <laughs> I'm more excited now than, you know, than ever right. about doing my work. Why wouldn't feel, you be? Yeah, it's just, especially the last couple of years have been so great. Um, Cause I, instead of having to go to some beautiful place that's inspiring, I can work in my studio now um, without anything, you know, just mm -hmm. um, maybe photographs. Well, there's or, so much that springs out of the mind. It's, yeah. it's an endless well yeah, of yeah. creativity. Yeah. That's do you, right. do you, bother to title works like these? Do you find that it's useful or well, is it just like an add-on? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah, sometimes I get my titling is very difficult for me, creating yeah. titles. I, I don't think everything has to have a title. No. You know? And I actually think a lot of your work speaks so well for itself oh, that I don't yes. think, I think sometimes a title can pigeonhole something. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it right. can be an opening to, yes. as well, but... Yeah. Uh, Sometimes no, no, no. I get titles, I will read poetry and I'll take little phrases. I hope that's mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> but, you know, words that I wouldn't think of that remind me of my work. So, they're, you know, I like using poetry mm -hmm. for a few words, just open-ended, you know, kind of. Well, I think one of the, the other things that I, I am drawn to by your work, and there's a lot of artists that do this, is you have the balance, you have the color, but then there's also sort of, uh, sometimes it's a hidden narrative that's mm -hmm. within the work. And yeah. I love that. I, I like the idea. I can see it in, mm -hmm. in your work and in the work of not everybody, yeah. but yeah. it's there. And it, to me, that's, that's kind of a joy of art where you can look at it one day and see something. Mm -hmm. And then 10 years later, oh, I never noticed yeah. that, you know, it, it's talking about this or that. And I, and I really enjoy that. So, yeah. you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about this and even this piece, we were talking about, you had some, uh, some of the swirling on top as a reference to, to your, your garden, yeah. right? You have yeah. sort of an iron work. Yeah. These iron uh, dividers. Right. And yeah, they're always in my work. I, uh, but once you know that now, now I'm going to be looking at it in, yeah. you know, as a fresh look for right. your other piece. And even something as simple, so there was a bird here, yeah. but you had made mention of the shape behind it. I, I'm hoping oh. I'm not gonna give it away, but no. too late. So, okay, so <laughs> this shape here, it just, I, I, yeah, I am so influenced by where I live. Like everything in my garden, um, you know, I just go out there all the time and just look around and, so important to me where I live. Um, my surroundings have always been important to me. But one time, I was just telling Craig the story. I came home after being away for a couple of weeks and it was nighttime and I walk up the path and I haven't been home. So it's been very quiet there. And I just look on this little bridge over this little fish pond that's just off the path. 
and I saw what looked like a miniature snowman <laughs> in September or August. And, um, and I just stood there for five minutes. I was going to wait him out and see, is this going to move or is this, you know, did somebody put a little stuffed animal there or something? And sure enough, the little head moved and it was an <laughs> Eastern, it was a baby Eastern mm -hmm. screech owl. And so that's what, since I'm doing a bird series right. for the last two years, you know, I just decided to put him in there. I mean, well, you it's put him shape, in there, but it's the shape. But of, I hid him behind a high Right. Hydrangea. That's what I, yeah. I love that storyline. So, uh -huh. um, yeah. You know, yeah. is that, is that the kind of thing that you, uh, would divulge normally? Did I, did I let the secret no. out of the bag or? No, I mean, I could, you know, if you want to hear interesting things about <laughs> the piece, you know, or, yeah. Well, I do, but I also don't at the same time. Right. I, I, I want to enjoy it and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think about the, the say, like the, uh, the math that's involved in this and like the secret geometry or does that just flow out of you? I wish I knew more. I wish I had taken um, perspective more seriously. I'm, I'm mm. seriously considering taking a perspective class mm -hmm. because I think it would push me along. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is just. I think you already kind of know it. But I, you, I do. You I, know, I know. I know. I know. But like looking at certain work, and you know that you know there's that golden triangle. Da da da. I, right. But I couldn't teach it or anything. I just, you know. It's fun. It, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. There's only so much time you have to. You know. So tell me, um, what would you say is is as speaking as an artist? What's the hardest part of what you do as an artist? The hardest what's the part. What's the big, biggest challenge? Titling the work. Titling? <laughs> no, yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, I mean, every piece is a challenge. Right. Um, some some artists, artists will, will talk about just the getting the initial idea. Some people yeah. will tell me it's about, um, it's after the artwork. It's actually, you know, getting it sold or talking with clients or something. So just as, as a whole. Oh, as a, okay. So for me, marketing my work and, and getting it out there is a huge uh, yeah. battle. I, I just, I almost never, you know, like I have a show. I have a lot of shows actually. And I'll wait until right before, I'll wait until the show is hung before I'll send out an invite. It's because <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to actually accomplish <laughs> the thing, you know? I got you. <laughs> I guess I don't pace myself well enough. I pace myself yeah. right to the end. You know, I'm framing that last week. I, um, right. you know, all of that. Yeah. But You're honestly, so it's marketing, yeah. you know, or a lot of artists have Instagram going on. And I just started that about two weeks ago. Well, it's so it's, difficult. I think nowadays there's a lot more pressure to, for, for creatives, not to just be creative, but you have to yeah. know absolutely everything mm -hmm. about being a business, you know, the yes. idea, yeah. that golden age of just, you know, painting and somebody yeah. else will take care of that. I know. You know, it's, yeah. it's a shame. So it is. <laughs> it's, I think it is a little stifling, but that's my own uh, yeah. thing. So, so I'm curious to know, what are you currently working on? Is this like the, the <laughs> last thing to come out of your studio? Or yeah, you... this is the last okay. thing. These three pieces I finished about two weeks ago. And I varnished them and, you know, took them to the client. Um, you had mentioned for, earlier that the pandemic oh, sort of forced you to, to think absolutely. about your 100 bird project. Right, right. Is that so, still ongoing? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's yes. a bigger... Yeah, I'm, I'm doing... Um, well, I started doing birds two years ago and I produced a lot of them, but this is... It felt different, you know, I'm doing a COVID bird series <laughs> and the goal is a hundred. So mm. I'm about halfway there. Um, yeah, I never get tired of doing those. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, I, I would like to show them all at one time, in fact, because they're all very different. It, they're not. Um, are they about, all about the same size? or No, not? Okay. I'm working larger and smaller. You know, I work, yeah. I, I love, some of these little ones are just, I just love doing them. They're, you know, you just do what you, um, how can I explain? You don't get stuck and I don't get stuck in my work. Mm -hmm. I just do what I want to do. And I learned that a long, a while ago. I so, personally... I think enjoy actually a lot of your smaller works a little bit more. Mm -hmm. As an artist, I'm 
keenly aware that you have the ability to move the viewer around the room, right? So a bigger piece will put you back. And, a, right. and the fact that you have these gorgeous little collage pieces, to me, it's wonderful that you bring the viewer so close to the work. And it's almost like yeah. a small conversation, like you're whispering oh. some of these works. And I think, you know, that really sets the tone for a lot. And I think it's repeated in some of the colors, the palettes that you use as well. Oh. So I, I, I love these little whispering birds, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, the, the, it works out really well. Um, so, so I've seen quite a bit of your work. And, and one of the things that I'm curious about is other artists that you look at, like, who do you look at? Like who, what artists are like your, your go-tos or have you discovered anybody uh, new recently? Anybody new? Uh, yeah, I have. Let me try to think. <laughs> I can't think. Uh, you know, I, um, I don't actually look at too many artists, uh, just I go to shows and, you know, um, I, I spent so many years <clears throat> looking so intensely at different artists, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, do you think you, maybe you've moved, you know, back to just nature as, as an maybe, inspiration or maybe, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I, I've gone through phases where I loved Japanese art and then right. I loved, um, impressionist right. like in my when I was like 20, I would go to the, I lived in Paris for a semester and I would just go to that Jeu de Pomme right. and look, you know, like this, I would just paint the whole painting with, you know, I would stand there for 15 minutes <laughs> just studying, you know, it was, so I've gone through all of that yeah. and yeah, I still look at artists. I, there are a lot that well, I love. I, I know that you um, have artwork of others in your house and you, right so you have a, a collection yeah yeah really of it. I have, yeah and that, where does that, how does that come about does uh usually well i uh usually we've traded or um like jackie cotter i've got okay. a couple of her pieces um i've got a seymour remenick uh -huh. that i just love i i never stop looking at that um, I could see it from the kitchen. So I'm constantly amazed at what he could do with mm -hmm. about three colors. Oh, right. Because this uh -huh. was just a, it's a small lithograph. It was um, a commission he did of a, a woman just sitting there with a book and a candlestick. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely brilliant. So you do but, look at other artists. Oh, of course. Right. I look all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the time I'm looking at uh, work. But I don't have a favorite right now. You know, I mean, Deben Corn is probably my all-time favorite. Oh yeah, artist. I can imagine. You know? Yeah, I, I saw some yeah. great work of his in San Francisco, but oh, really? I don't. It's, he's a little. I find he's a little hard to come by here in Philly. Yeah, like, yeah. A he's pieces, a California so. painter. Um, before Fairfield, I can... uh, uh, Fairfield. Oh Porter, yeah, Fairfield I, Porter. I love. Yeah, another main. And yeah, his yeah. brother did a lot of photographs. Yeah. I used to look at those oh, I didn't too. see those yet. Uh, before I continue, I just want to remind everybody, uh, we're going to be taking some questions from the audience. So at the bottom of your screen, you have a chat feature. If anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to put them forward. My assistant will bring them forward. So um, you had mentioned that your, your mother had uh, printmaking equipment in right. her studio. Yeah, she taught uh, class. She taught and, all the printmakers. Right. In so aside, but aside from woodcuts, you also have presses. As well, I right? have a press okay. and I, I just use it. I stopped doing uh, printmaking, um, I mean, except for woodcut, um, because the chemicals were so harsh and, mm. you know, all that lithotine and you over mm. it, you know, I, so. It makes it I a little decided, bit difficult. Yeah. So what are your- Because I could feel it in my lungs, even by the time I finished the academy, uh, I yeah. said, I, I've got to, even wearing masks, you know, I said, I can't. Yeah, it's not that's, worth it. I've, I've seen other people get sick because of their work, you know, like mm -hmm. a woman at the academy, she was blow torching wax or something and she burned a hole in her lung. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. You know, I, safety is really it's, important. It's an issue. If you want to do this for the long haul, you need yeah, those sorts yeah, of things. Yeah. So what are your go-to tools? Because you had mentioned that you you have that wonderful set of wood knives. carving knives, and I'm right. sure you probably keep them in pristine condition yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And then do you, are there other materials that you use that are sort of your go-to? Like, I, I mean, aside from the wood yeah. cuts, it looks like there's some other 
other processes going on that you have like this is, is this a resist yeah. up in here that yeah that's using? part of yeah that's part of the catasome okay. and um i use the gray is actually using soybean and sumi so you okay soak soybeans it's it's as impervious as um acrylic paint okay like a polymer i yeah. mean it never changes it's very you know it but it, it takes a few days to cure mm -hmm. and then you can soak your stencil once it's cured and yeah i use like this is using a pigment stick um that i got in cal from somebody in california okay. so you're, you're yeah. still experimenting with materials whenever you can yeah it sounds like. yeah i yeah. don't uh for me just going out and buying a whole set of paints doesn't really inspire me mm -hmm. um i like to do things a different way <laughs> <laughs> have you yeah. ever made your own uh pigments or have tried well, i do the that? pigments yeah I, okay I, yeah all the time with um, like this blue and that gray and there's some red. Um, I don't know if that red is in this piece But yeah, I, and I I want to keep experimenting with that um, Yeah, but like instead of painting I'd like to print something with the lines, you know mm -hmm. it's, Do you find all about edges? Yeah, I'm very interested in edges. I'm very interested in um, Like keeping a piece like kind of breathing mm -hmm. like not too heavy um, so, for example, I was having a lot of trouble in this piece down in this section because this was just a, it was just a, you know, a big stroke of blue and it just was ruining this. And all I did, I just put this piece here to soften that and mm -hmm. it kind of made this whole circle work now, makes the blues work as a, you know, a round mm -hmm. shape that can then, you know, relate to the rest of it. I enjoy the fact that you rarely use black. Yeah, I don't. I um, don't use too much black. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like a super dark blue that yeah. that it comes into. Occasionally, yeah. there'll be a, but you yeah. don't. It doesn't. It's not necessary. Not needed for uh -huh. that. Why do you have that question? Oh. Okay. Um, oh, that's great. Uh, so this does this piece have a title? No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, curious. It <laughs> Actually, it does. But I, yeah, it's just the name of the. Um, so, um, uh, I've got a few questions from the audience. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, so we'll see if we can get through a few of these. Should I um, guess who asked the questions if I, uh, some of my <laughs> I don't know if we we'll have time for that. <laughs> um, uh, can you please explain the, the medium? Um, so I, I assume that they're okay. talking about the inks and we, we just kind of okay. covered a lot, yeah, so a lot of Yeah, so there's several mediums in this piece. There's painting, there's woodcut, there's katazome, which is a uh, resist paste technique uh, you know so it's like drawing with paper drawing and painting how you apply pigment it doesn't have to be out of a tube mm. you can apply pigment by gluing down a piece of paper and the way i i it doesn't look like a collage because i peel the paper down to just the pigment layer i spray it it's very labor intensive but it's what i like to do i peel the paper back mm. to where it's very you know, mm. So uh, not, not all of it like this is doesn't need it like some papers don't peel as well Tori Noko peels right layer after layer like the better the quality of the paper the more layers you can get off of it uh, if you could go back to your younger self what advice would you give yourself oh god oh, <laughs> what a question that's great um I think to have more confidence in my work you know I just thank you like I mean, I've always, like, as an artist, you have to have confidence, like, and you do. To be an artist your whole life, you're, you're damn right you have, you're mm -hmm. confident in your work. However, to consciously have com confidence and go mm -hmm. out there and, you know, get mm -hmm. galleries and all of that. I should have done more of that. I, I blew a lot of very good opportunities. I had a lot of support, and I didn't always, um, you know, because I didn't think I was ready or whatever yeah. you know well, i can see the confidence in the work now so it's yeah. it's there yeah. so yeah um i think we have time for one one final question okay. um this is a this is a good one what do you envision as the next evolution of your work that you want to try yeah great question um i am going to i know craig likes my small work but i'm going to keep working on these <laughs> large you know large beautiful more some more horizontal but i can uh you know i have i know what i'm i have the vision right now so um i'm gonna just uh 
you know, like you could see this room. I, I sit here in a room like this and I, <laughs> I see my work, my future work. <laughs> I do. I see, you know, three large pieces over there and I get ideas. So, yeah. So um, working I'm... on canvas on panels. I, I like this. Um, instead of behind glass, I used to frame most of my work. Um, but when you work large on canvas, you can, um, you can varnish. And uh, I, I've just really started using varnish mm. in my work. And mm -hmm. it's a really cool. Me know. too, actually. Oh, me. really? I resisted it for years. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. I was afraid to use spray varnish. And I ruined some work with, or I think I ruined it. Um, it was too heavy with brushing on the varnish. So, um, yeah, you spray. You know, there's a whole right. art. Uh, and the French used to have a day of varnishing. Right, so. yeah. I mean, it really makes the colors pop. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I myself didn't use it as a reaction against early on in my career. I saw people who would buy paintings that were super shiny and they yeah. were only buying it because they were super yeah, shiny. Yeah, and I yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. I had uh, no, no I'm interest not going in that. There. No. Yeah. But as an idea, as a protectant or as to, to bring the color forward. I yeah. thought that was really good. And one thing very important, you can't go back into it right. once it's varnished, so it's <laughs> well, finished. Well, you can, but that's a, that's another <laughs> conversation for another day. Yeah. So, um, well, with that, I want to thank you for coming by oh, today. Thanks, I thought this was really great. I learned so much about your work. I think it's just spectacular. Oh, thank um, you so you're much. still working on stuff, and uh, yeah. I can't wait to see what else comes out of your work. Okay. I want to remind our audiences to go to Julie Zahn's website, uh, she's got a lot of great work on that website. And one of the things I want to always encourage people to do is you don't have to wait for a gallery show. You don't have to wait for anything like that. You can always just contact an artist. Yeah. Most artists would love to have you come for a studio visit yeah. and, and buy their work. So I or, encourage you to do that. Just or not um, even just for a conversation or yeah, a cocktail. Or absolutely. apparently even an interruption will work to <laughs> spawn you onto something new. Yeah, so. That's right. Um, with that, I'm Craig Stover, the Executive Director of Balance Lane Arts Center. I want to thank you again for uh, tuning in tonight. Uh, make sure to tune in every night at uh, Thursdays at 7. So thank you very much and have a nice night, everybody. Thank Thanks again, Julie. Thanks so Appreciate much. It.